Okay, it looks like things are ready. So, take it away. All right, hello everybody and welcome to the North American Global Collaborative Project between the University of Northern Iowa and Red River College. Uh, so we are in, uh, Red River College is in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and the University of Northern Iowa is in Iowa in the United States of America. So we're excited to welcome everyone here. We're expecting some celebrities and dignitaries to pop in and out, so we're looking for those. We have the celebrity, uh, celebrities and dignitaries with us today, and those are our students. And that has been just the most rewarding piece of this learning process. Thank you all. So I don't want to take away their time because they have done the amazing work and the learning and the experiences that they've never had before. And I'm just going to tell you, you will never. So change does happen one person at a time. So we're going to, I'm going to turn it back to you, Dr. Zeitz, and then group one. So thank you. Thank you. So hello there, I'm Dr. Lee Zeitz, I'm here from the University of Northern Iowa. And what I'd like to do is introduce you to the project that we have and then introduce you to the people who made it happen. And so, uh, hang on a sec. We're going to share the screen here. Hold it. There we go. It's a little clumsy. But so as she said, this is the North American uh, Global Project and we have both the University of Northern Iowa coming from the Cedar Falls, um, Iowa in the USA and the Red River College coming from Winnipeg, Manitoba in Canada. And this is a, a project that Dr. Uh, Brown and I, we've been threatening to put something like this together for a long time and, and this time we made it happen. No, actually we made, the students are the ones who made it happen. And you'll notice that uh, I, my class was using digital and social media. It's uh, undergraduates who are in the ed tech minor who were working on that. And Dr. Brown's had two classes actually. It was the e uh, assessment and evaluation as well as technology infused pedagogy. The sustainable uh, development goals are actual goals that were developed in 2015 by the U UNESCO. And these are 17 goals that have been ratified by over 115 countries. And they have all agreed to try to work towards no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, reduced inequalities, climate action. And each one of our projects, each one of our, our teams, decided to take one of these on for their own. Now, one of the things that we did is we made it so we have a Google Doc, which is the overall um, resource. So if you want to be able to get to this later on, write this, this one down. All of these resources, the videos, the, uh, all that sort of thing is accessible through this resource. That's tinyurl.com slash NAGP, the North American Global Project, Overview. Say that again, NAGP, Overview. So what we're going to do is I'm going to click on that. That's going to bounce us right over to the overview. And this is the sequence in which these groups are going to be pro progressing. What I'd like to do is share with you um, the, the overview itself. This is where we talked about the purpose, the project overview, the online community, the weekly assignments and how we had this all set up. And uh, then down at the bottom, we have once again that list. We have eight pages of information here. And this is a way in which you can learn more about, about what we've accomplished. So without further ado, I would like to introduce group one. Take it away. Hi, I am Andrew. And I'm Brianna. Uh, we are at UNI and we were working with Dan and Emily at Red River College. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are from, whoa, that's some reverberation, love it. We are from uh, Winnipeg and the project that we did was um, we, to we wanted to take um, renewable energy and get students' minds on the idea of just thinking towards renewable energy and how, uh, how it works, what, what kinds of renewable energy there are, um, the processes in which 
It's created by, t it's really just to get their minds thinking on other sources of uh, energy that are not fossil fuels, coal, the, the uh, non-renewable. Uh, we, the idea for this, the overarching goal was to have uh, a, a template, a lesson plan that you could give anyone around the world and they could pull out and go, you know what, this is a great uh, resource to use for my students to set up a, a unit. And at the end, the idea is you go and do experiments with the students to show, hey, what happens if you take all these lemons, put them together with uh, copper wire, hook them up to an LED and some pennies, hey, the LED lights up. So to get their, uh, their minds uh, on the idea that uh, there is other ways to produce energy. So we came up with a, I don't know if you guys have the presentation set up there. Yeah, we do. Whoa, right here. Enough. Look at that, beautiful. Um, so <laughs> with our lesson, we had the uh, PowerPoint, the lesson plan, uh, the assessment and the handout that all comes into one package. So someone could just pick it out and go, great. That was our idea was simplicity for uh, anyone to use. Um, can you go to the next slide? I guess we can start rolling. So like I said, the idea is to get students thinking on renewable and non-renewable energy and how we can sustain it. Yeah, so this was our learning goal. Also, if you guys have anything to add. <laughs> so our learning goal for this project was that by the end of this lesson, the students will be able to differenti differentiate between renewable and non-renewable energy and how we can sustain it if it is possible to sustain it. So these are just a few of our objectives. Uh, the learner will explain the different energy resources, renewable and non-renewable, and place them into their everyday lives. The learner is able to assess and understand the need for affordable, reliable, sustainable, and clean energy for countries all over the world. And the learner is able to apply principles to determine the most appropriate renewable energy. So what we did was we made this uh, PowerPoint uh, as informational. We have a few videos throughout it that we're not going to have time to show right now. Uh, there's a little bit of information on different kinds of renewable energy. Uh, there's information on uh, what's great about that, as well as what could be the downfall of each type of energy. And then at the end of it, we have videos for and uh, places where a teacher can go to get experiments and activities for their kids to do this at. So. I'll let Brianna introduce these. Yeah, so it's actually kind of hard to do renewable energy with like wind turn miles and stuff like that. So we found easy cheap experiments you can actually do at home. So we have one where we have lemons and um, that creates a light using natural power. Same with the ice tray battery. And then we also have um, a little experiment where you can take pennies and then create a little mini wind turn mile. Um, and then same thing with the other experiment. See, this is a, the penny powered flashlight here is pretty cool too because that's using the power of pennies to light up a little light bulb and everyone has pennies. Can I cut it for a second? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Can you get it? Okay, I think we're good now. So one thing I wanted to point out was all the information that you needed for this lesson plan is uh or so where to go what to get whatnot it's all linked to the uh the lesson plan we have so if someone wanted to go hey you know what i don't know i don't know how to do this or i don't know where to get it you know it, it you just link it'll give you the websites everything you need to set it up it's the the it just requires a little bit of uh work on the teacher's part but it, it it's it's a good way to get kids like i said thinking about uh other forms of energy yeah, yeah. So, like Dan was just talking about, we, this is actually the outline that had everything right here. There should be lesson plan right at the top one. Yeah. Let's roll up lesson plan. That's, That's the lesson plan out. itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, has all the information you would need there, and then we also included an assessment piece with the. 
Uh, oh, oh, trying to click on it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so after we've gone through all of um, the lesson plan, we made like a little mini assessment quiz um, for the students to take once they've learned everything. All right, so do we have any questions for parents? Tell them to mute their, their, um, their microphone if they're not speaking. Uh, they're, they're all muted. Oh, yeah, they're all muted. Yep, they're all muted. So. What grade level do you think this is going to be best for? I'd say it's seventh and eighth graders. Seventh sure. and eighth graders. Yeah, that's what we kind of targeted. And it's relatively easy enough for them to use in the class. And a lot of this you can do as a teacher in a 50 minute class period. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to stretch it out over a week, there's different materials there and there's different experiments that you can do every day with your students that would easily be able to fit into the uh, into your class period. Anything else? Sorry, the barge in again, kind of muting, unmuting, muting, unmuting kind of deal over here. But uh, the idea with that would be um, it, it's to set up like an ultimate unit. Uh, so this is something you give to your students to introduce them to uh, what you want to teach later. And the beauty about it is you can maybe you're teaching about solar or something and you're doing a project based activity. This is great because it, it talks about solar and wind turbine and talks about hydroelectricity. So. All right. Looks like we're at time. So thank you for, uh, for listening to us. And if you would like more information, uh, you can go ahead and I'm going to invite uh, yeah. uh, Judy McGurk from Red River College, who has popped into the room. Welcome, Judy. Judy is the director of our uh, Certificate in Adult Ed program in the Teacher Education Department at the college. Welcome. Sydney, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. I think I put mine here by accident. Is this yours? Nope. Okay, not mine. Too much. What got it? What got put in here? Huh? Okay. Yeah, I think Andrew, you deleted my thing. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need to log into something really quick because, yeah. Stop share. Okay, but I'm I need to look for something because it's not there anymore. Yeah. Because I had something in that area and now it's all gone. Really? Uh-huh. What happened? Um I put something in there, but my information is gone. In so where? in the overview area where my slideshow was and it's not there, so I have to go to it. It opened up my presentation. Um, yeah. Sydney, I think it's at the very bottom of the slide. Okay. Nope. Nope. Under your, the bottom thing. There we go. Okay. Mini heart attack is over. <laughs> Share screen. Share. Okay. Hello. Can you all hear me okay? I'm going to take that as a yes. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on, Sydney. Hmm? Can everyone in your class hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then. So, our group chose the sustainable development goal number three, which is good health and well being. It consists of me, my partner, Isabel Gardner, could not be here today due to work conflicts. And then we have Shane and Ryan from Canada. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> So our process on this project is just a timeline over these past couple five weeks. 
We started off on October 11th with an introductory Zoom meeting between both classes before we can figure out and determine which one of the sustainable development goals we wanted to have. Um, after we figured that out, we created a WhatsApp chat, and then <coughs> after figuring out different project ideas to make a teacher resource project full of health lesson plans for other teachers to utilize. Throughout October 17th to November 13th, we were working on this project as well as completing different evaluation forms, blogging and tweeting about our process, and then making a whole bunch of revisions with the help of Eva Brown and Lee Sykes. And then now we're here to today, the 14th and doing presentations. So our target indicator, which you can find on the Sustainable Development Goal website is indicator 3.4 that by 2030, we can reduce by one third premature mortality from non communicable diseases through prevention and treatment and promote mental health and well being. And to do that, we made a Seven Dimensions teacher resource page. So, this we created a learning goal of being able to promote health across all curricula and age groups in an effective manner. So with health, you normally think of physical health, not mental, emotional, spiritual. There's so many other um, aspects that fall into it. And then I think Ryan can take it from here. So each one of us gave us uh, the opportunity to focus on a different wellness. Um, the physical wellness is one that I had done. So all the pages are very similar. Um, so they focus on the same thing. So what is physical wellness? Why is uh, wellness important? And then what are the aspects to maintaining good wellness? So for instance, for the physical, we focus on sleep, eat well, hygiene and relaxation. And how can we bring that into the classroom and promote that across all curricula um, through K to 12? Yeah. And then there's a few points on how to promote and support the wellness that you're trying to incorporate into your classroom. And then some key categories in regards to exercises. So with physical wellness, you know, doing movement breaks, which is very common in, in early years, to using uh, video games such as We Fit um, in the middle years. And then, um, Cindy, can you just scroll down again? Sorry. Yeah, of course. And then something like acting out is another way to get kids up and involved in the classroom to maybe you're telling a story or you're doing vocabulary, another great way to do that. So under each wellness, we focused on lesson plans and activities. With lesson plans and activities, it was easier to do on some compared to others. Physical wellness is pretty easy because we have phys ed, we have gym, um, but trying to find a lesson plan that focuses on intellectual wellness doesn't really exist, but there's way to, ways to incorporate intellectual wellness into the classroom. So with this page here that Sydney has clicked on, this is a web-based uh, course outline where if Sydney clicks on, on the left side under preview courses, oh, you just passed it, Sydney, halfway up. Found right it. There. So <laughs> you click on there and then it'll ask us to preview the courses as a guest, right in the middle. Okay we're able to look at some of the classes. So on the left hand or on the right hand side, sorry, if we scroll down to physical education, you can click on 30F or 40F, yeah. These are modules that show you different um, activities or exercises you can do in regards to phys ed. So we wanted to give everyone the opportunity to be able to post and share lesson plans so that everyone has this website as a resource. Um, if you have something cool that you're doing in your classroom for math and you want to share that, you can just um, add that into our website uh, and Sydney will explain how you go about doing that. Yeah, so if you go back to our general website, at the bottom of every single page, I'll go to my social wellness one. Besides 11th and 12th grade, we have tried to create it so it's K through 12 and everybody can kind of have an example. So here's grades three through five, here's six through eight. And then at the bottom, it's just like, how do you want to do this? Do you know, um, do you want to do this with us? Follow these steps and you'll be good to go. And you can find all of our contact information on the last page underneath our universities. And then, let's 
see. We've managed to put in some elements of inquiry-based pedagogy as well. Ryan, did you or Shane want to take that? So, oh, sorry, we're just going to turn off our thing. Thanks, Eva. <laughs> uh, so we base our sole project on the elements of inquiry-based pedagogy. So we kind of focus on each individual category and how we can incorporate that into um, the wellness aspect. So as an example, infusing technology was one of the categories that we had discussed. Um, and that was, you know, having everyone tweet, share this website. So it's very easily accessible across everyone in the world. Um, but we really focused on each category of inquiry based pedagogy to make sure that we were hitting on all of those um, and associating those with the learning outcomes for each grade. Yep. So if you have any questions or comments, please share. This is your time. Okay. What was your greatest challenge on this? Um, our greatest challenge on this was finding a good time to communicate and work with each other face to face. Uh, the four of us have some um, differences in our schedule. So it was really difficult to like meet up as a whole. There'd be moments where I would meet one on one with somebody and then meet up with another person and I have to summarize everything I got done throughout the day into one massive message in our WhatsApp chat in order to share all the information. I think another two uh, issue that we had or um, was that it's very easy to think about ideas on how you want to incorporate um, them into the website, but you want to be able to communicate with your other group members. And sometimes that would take, you know, five minutes to do. And sometimes it would take a whole day before we could even move on to the next aspect of our website, just because we wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. Um, so time was a big, a big issue for us, but I'm, I think we were able to manage and get the website done to the appropriate amount. Yeah. Um, what do you think are like the benefits to collaborating with someone who isn't like I would say the benefit of that is getting different perspectives and point of views because something down here in Iowa can be like common sense to us because all of our schools kind of have the same format, just different execution. And then up there, it's like kind of different on time. No, no, great questions. Keep going. Oh, okay. And like, I just feel like having different perspectives on different points on one subject definitely helps you keep an open mind and kind of ties in with universal learning design because maybe universal de learning design down here, we like think, oh, this is easy. This is something we always think about, but maybe it could be different with something up there. And for, for us, it was really nice to be able to share how we do things in Canada because when we do research, mm -hmm. most of the time we're getting things that are from the States. Uh, if you look at the sources on our, on our website, most of them were University of California, University of Ohio State, like all different uh, American universities. And so there isn't really much out there um, in terms of sources from Canadian sources so I made a specific focus to try to find Canadian sources whenever I could and obviously sharing the Manitoba education and training uh, framework and, and that getting that out to you guys allows you to open your horizons. Yeah. Terrific job. Way to go! Okay. Okay. Well, I can tell you. Um, my name is Devin. I need my notes. <laughs> and uh, this is Sean. I'm your repaired with Scott and Megan. And uh, this is this is our presentation. Um, just set, uh, why don't we have everybody turn uh, down? We are focused on the 14th uh, kind of goal. Devin, of, stop uh, for a second. UNESCO document. Oh. Devin, um, perhaps we could have everybody turn down or off your speakers so we don't get the feedback. Oh, you should have one one speaker in each um, location. We do only have Otherwise, one. Otherwise, get that feedback. Bringo. I think we do only have one. We have, we have none now. Can you, can you hear us? Closer to the mic? Farther away. What's the problem? There's feedback. I was blowing the jug in the back. Oh! Should we go out to the front? Yeah, sure. Okay, we're, we're just going to move to the front so that we can... 
on both speaker sets at the same time. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mike, closer? Mike, closer. Mike, closer. Don't bring that in. Or can you just go off? Well, you can talk here. Well, I'll leave it. I'll need it. Yeah. Don't forget your bank statement. No. All right. So our project yeah. is over, over water. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Our project was over life over water. That's it. And. Oh. No, but. Wanna actually yeah. Talk about those? Yeah. Yeah. I'll go over it. Um, this is going to be done in an hour. <laughs> oh, I've got time. Um, we just we decided to uh, uh, create a website on how to save the ocean per se. Um, we focused on different uh, causes like acidification and carbon dioxide getting into the water and coral bleaching. Um, testimonials. And then we got a. Uh, interview with, Teen Ka, with Dean Kahoshi, manager of the Kauai Island Reserve Commission, and to get some of his thoughts. So in Hawaii. In Hawaii, in Hawaii, as you can probably notice, neither one of us are anywhere close to an ocean. So we just, we wanted to get an opinion from somebody who one knows where an ocean is, and two, someone who is actively <laughs> uh, actively working on. Uh, is actively working on it and um, we decided on like what we can do um, the first thing is is testing pH which is how much acid acid is in the water and then there is a next page uh, ocean plastics pollution page which Megan, you created so yeah, a little quizzed so you can get more information about ocean pollution. And I'll go ahead and talk about our web quest a little bit really quickly. Um, we decided to go a little step further from creating just a lesson plan to actually create something that's tangible and can be used in your classroom today if you wanted to. Um, we created a web quest all about teaching younger students, grades six to eight ish, about ocean pollution and how it spreads. Because when you live in Iowa, you don't think that your plastics are able to get out to the oceans because we live in Iowa. And so this is a web quest all about teaching students how to see that, observe it, and how to educate others on what they can do. We don't have a ton of time, so I won't walk through a ton of this, but we have an entire page dedicated to having students experiment and have having them learn, as well as having them create things and make tangible outcomes with their project. And we have resources for educators who want to use this in their classroom to go through if they want to learn more about ocean pollution and how they can bring that into the classroom. So next we're gonna just, we, are, we are going to share on like what our pros and cons were of collaborating globally because this is probably the first time for all of us. So Devin and Sean, you guys wanna take away your first uh, things you learned? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I. Yeah. Okay. Good. I just want to get the uh, <laughs> turn off our speakers so we don't get the feedback. Uh, big thing that we learned that I felt that I learned through this process is just how key communication is. Um, but it was really cool being able to have. Yeah, we're something like ten or fifteen hour drive apart, and uh, like just a quick phone call or Zoom call, whatever, and we're able to to work together and, and get information from one another is really cool. Um, yeah, I just kind of learned how easy these global communications projects are just with the internet because there's any number of, you know, forums or Google Docs you can make to, um, you know, communicate with each other. And um, it's just a great, like, educational resource because you're kind of getting education in two different parts of the continent and you can really spread information and ideas around really easily that way. Yeah, we have fun with it though. It's cool. So what Megan and I really took away is that communication is vital. Um, you, without it, you get nowhere. Uh, about a week into the into the uh, project process, we we decided to make a WhatsApp between the two of us because we can't exactly text or call due to international stuff. So um, that was really a lifesaver for us. Without that, I don't know how we would have really uh, communicated at all. Mm -hmm. 
We also um, learned a lot about like expectations aren't universal and everyone needs to be on the same page with expectations with big projects like this. Everybody has different ideas and it's good to have those communicated really well in the beginning. And I also talked about starting with the end in mind, which is a habit of highly effective learners. Um, you have to have an end goal to know where you're going. And I think that was really important with this project. Anybody have any questions? Andrew. So was it hard to get in touch with this guy in Hawaii? Um, that was me. We got in touch. He finally, it was, a, it was a process. Um, they're in part of a big ocean cleanup project right now. They're out there actually cleaning up things. So they're really busy. And um, I just sent out a lot of emails to anybody with an email address. <laughs> and um, I sent a list of questions to make it easier on him so he could just answer those couple of questions when he had the free time. <laughs> And we didn't think he was going to get in touch with us, but he emailed me yesterday. He emailed me like the day before the project was due. So we just got in touch with him. But yeah, it was difficult to get in touch with them. But he was really willing to work with us once we told him we were a student group trying to make a difference. He was super cool with trying to help us out. It was just the timeline was a little difficult. Yes. Okay. Uh another issue we kind of felt we had, I just wanted to throw this in there, was like scheduling. Um, I, I know I, we have class today and you guys don't have class like on uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, right? So just finding time with that. And then in addition to like, we both, I think we all have jobs and just like other, like we're in four, four other classes as well. So it was, <laughs> that was a struggle as well. Sydney, do you yeah, have we, we were all on for a whole week teaching. Go ahead, Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we've been working on this project for about five weeks now, and I guess like if you could magically go back in time and give yourself some advice, which piece of advice would you give yourself about this project? Communicate earlier. Without a doubt, communicate earlier. And start with a clear goal right at the beginning and kind of go from there instead of working towards a goal that isn't super fleshed out, starting with a really fleshed out goal. Okay, let's go. All right, here we go. Good work with you guys. Oh, you really can't see me now. <laughs> Yeah, she said, wait a second. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is this group four? Yeah. We were going to take a quick little break. You want to take a break? Um, <laughs> we're not going to. Um, Dr. Brown. Yes, I'm here. Can't hear you. You cannot hear me? All right, now I can hear you. Okay, um, cool. Just thinking that maybe uh, we, we've gone through three of them and we've got three or four more. Uh, do you want to take a quick little break or do you want to just keep going? Well, uh, we would like to keep going, but if you need a bathroom break, two minutes or something, we can do that. If, if, if you want to keep going, we'll, we'll keep going. I just, uh, okay. I'm fascinated yeah. with this. Just yeah, want to let's check. Let's keep it. going. I think we're good. Okay. Next group coming up. Good. So group four then. We're good with group four next. All righty. So um, we're group four. Um, up here at UNI in Cedar Falls, we had myself, uh, James Freer, and Hannah Tooley, and both of us are actually communication majors. Um, we're trying to develop a type of lesson plan. Um, second. Brandon, you want to mute for just one second? Perfect. There we go. Um, so Trying to get a lesson plan for me and Hannah was a little more difficult. But luckily, we had Brendan and Ashley, and they stepped in and helped us out a lot with that. And Ashley's going to talk a little bit about the website we decided to make with this. Um, yeah. So, hang on. That's horrible. Okay. Um, so, a bit about the website. Um, our goal, our sustainable goal, was sustainable cities and communities. Uh, so our idea was to um, 
implement a bike shop within a high school setting. So this website is kind of just a resource uh, to do so. Uh, we posted a um, bunch of information on here, uh, kind of what the goal was, uh, what our uh, learning approaches are. Um, Brennan made an awesome video. Uh, we did, uh, we interviewed um, another bike lab within the city. Uh, just to get some ideas on how we would take their idea and implement it again in a school setting. Um, yeah, anything else you want to add? No, I think uh, I think Ashley covered it great. I know one of the things we were thinking about was how are we going to be able to implement this as a teacher or an educator, and uh, we kind of thought shot for the you know the moon, and it was. We'll talk about it more later, but kind of bringing down our expectations mm -hmm. and uh, creating the video. I'm not sure if we want to watch it now or if we're going to show it on the thing, on the projector, because I don't know how sound or whatever is going to be on here. Um, we'll, try, we'll try it on our end. If it doesn't work, we'll just keep moving. But yeah. we'll try it since it's pretty short. So. I mean, that's what it's all about, getting people on their bikes, right? Getting butts on bikes, that's what we we act as a classroom for community, faculty, for students, for everybody who's interested. This is a to go. A portion of all student fees. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the number is. Two dollars comes off of that. Uh, that funds us. We provide a service that helps them make it a sustainable uh, means of transport, and that's what we're aiming for: is to make transport sustainable and healthy for the environment. Literally, everyone is welcome at the bike lab. And what that does is makes the bike lab, uh, it, it's a juxtaposition between various parts of society. So in the bike lab, you'll find people with multiple PhDs or people who are displaced or new to Canada, all working together beside each other. And that is totally unique and wonderful. Because what we're doing is we're teaching people skills, and they go and teach other people those same skills. And, and that is really central to the ethos of the cycle community. So we're all here to support one another. It brings people who, as I said, would never otherwise have met. Especially the young people, I mean, we get droves of them. Like, we're when school is out, there's a whole pack of kids who come here and all interested in either learning to fix their bike, uh, being a volunteer, or building a bike for themselves, which is fantastic. And one way to encourage that is to help the, the high schools and junior highs develop programs. Uh, and it's not reinventing the wheel here. This, this has been done <coughs> hundreds of times, and there are many ones in, in uh, Winnipeg that you can contact and uh, get the support of, uh, as well as us and the ranch, and, and on it goes. But we really want to be emphasizing that people learn through doing. We work together to achieve the same thing, which is sustainable transport, really. It is pretty cool as a like how a solid skill set that you can identify and say, hey, I can build a bike in my own hands. I know how to work on bike. It's like it's a pretty cool empowering feeling. Alrighty. So um with that, as you probably noticed, there's a lot of footage from up in Winnipeg. Um unfortunately uh, Hannah and I were unable to get a lot of footage because of some time conflicts. Um, but the cool thing is that this was something that was happening in Winnipeg, as well as happening here in the Cedar Valley, um, right here at Cedar Falls at the University of Northern Iowa, um, with the Waterloo Bike Coalition ran by Mike Knapp. Um, so it's a really cool thing that those are kind of happening side by side. Um, but we're just going to walk you through the website real quick um, and then kind of talk about what we learned. Um, so first page, home page, introduction to the students about why this is important. Um, the second page has... Um, the objectives on it and approaches as well as members um and then it also has our twitter and word and wordpress or blog or whatever type you use um so that way if you want to get in contact with us those are available to you um but then in the course outline we decided to go with more of a unit 
instead of one lesson plan because this is a lot of things to cover um, in one day, one lesson plan, one week. Um, so we wanted to make it stretch out and kind of either take it into a course or a unit kind of depending on where it is, um, where they would learn some of the skills like market research, um, doing some of the management, um, building a business up, and then even just going ahead and running and having part of the class be that bike shop so that the students can learn um, for themselves what it's like to do that. Um, and then the final page is just our entire resources. Um, so on here we give um, the students an idea of what type of um, survey they could run for market research, um, certain interview questions, um, as well as some of the places that we decided to interview to make sure that we could get the research we needed. Um, but with that, I think we'll turn it back over to Brendan and Ashley, um, and they'll be able to talk a little bit more about what they learned. Hey, it's me again. Uh, so yeah, just again, looking at the website, the video quality uh, through the feed, by the way, is really bad. So that's not a good representation of what, of, of what I can do. Just want to throw <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I hope if you do want to check it out, please check out the website. Uh, where the quality is, it's much better. Uh, so that's one of the things I just learned is yeah. when you want to show a video over a, vi a video conference, don't. <laughs> um, yeah, I've learned that um, stuff like this takes a lot of time. Uh, we put a lot of effort into it. We all worked really well together. Uh, but to actually implement things like this, it's not really that easy and it will take a little bit more time and effort um but it was a lot of fun yeah and one of the things that we're excited about is we actually have the a practic our practicums at the same school mm -hmm. um and i know like one of the my cts have talked about uh trying new things and kind of going go for broke so this is one of the things that uh, we kind of built it in the sense that we want to implement it in the in the uh in the winter when we're over there in the spring when we're over at, mm -hmm. uh, at our school yeah I would, I would say that on our end um, for me and Hannah, the thing that we learned probably um, was that um, kind of utilize, utilizing the skills that all of us had. Um, obviously, Hannah and I knew that we were not going to be very useful when it came to making the lesson plan and doing that kind of stuff just because we don't come from that type of background. Um, but something that we do a lot in the communications department is do a lot of the research. Um, and it just happened to be that when Brendan and Ashley were doing um, kind of their field experience up in Winnipeg, um, so they weren't able to be in the classroom doing a lot of that research, Hannah and I really just dug, dug in and did that. Um, but then when they were able to do their lessons plans and make this beautiful website and video, um, they really dug in and did that. So just kind of utilizing everyone's skills um, was probably the best thing that we did. And it was something that I learned was really valuable in a process like that. Um, so I think we have time for maybe like one question and then we'll hand it off to the next group. If anyone's got one. Any questions from up there? I don't think so. All right, perfect. We will go ahead and hand it off to group five then. Thank you. Okay, it shouldn't take super long to introduce it. I mean, he was just talking about how it didn't work well. That's okay. <laughs> Can you drag, drag them up the right here? Can we, can we see us? Yeah. Do you want okay. the step stool? No, I'm good. So my name is Emily. And I'm Sydney. <laughs> and we're from the University of Northern Iowa. I'm Colton and Diana, if you want to introduce yourselves. Your sound is off. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> Hi. I'm, I'm Colton. And Diana. And we chose this project because we are all passionate about education and we want to make more sustainable schools. So we interviewed Eric O'Brien, who is the sustainability director at the University of Northern Iowa. And we interviewed Whitney Crooks, uh, who is our resource reduction specialist here at Red River College. The way we presented this was in a voice thread, so we'll just go ahead and play it and you'll hear kind of our audio over top of it. Information on sustainability across universities. The goal of this project is to start a conversation on sustainability. 
This is based on the sustainable development goals from the United Nations Education, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. Our focus was on goal four, which is quality education. Along the way, we found that we also touched on goal 11, sustainable cities, and community and production. Our project was aimed at meeting the objective of the learners able to engage personally with education for sustainable development, ESD, and knows about strategies and studying to be an elementary or middle school teacher at the University of Northern Iowa. My name is Sydney DeBryan and I go to the University of Northern Iowa. I'm studying to be a high school math teacher. My name is Colton Grimba. I'm studying to be a business and technology high school teacher from Red River College. We are a group of pre-service teachers that are passionate about sustainability within schools. The approach we chose for this project was to start a dialogue about this sustainability. Our research focused on the comparison of two different universities, one in the United States and one in Canada. The colleges we attend are the University of Northern Iowa and Red River College. As pre-service teachers, we value this not only in our lives, but in the lives of our students. How sustainable do you feel your school is? Campus between the University of Northern Iowa and Red River College, we found that there were a few similarities and a few differences. Some of the similarities include um, both schools encouraging students and staff to bike to school, with many bike racks located around campus. We also found that uh, both schools encouraged uh, alternate modes of transportation, such as buses and carpooling to school. Uh, some of the differences that we found were that the University of Northern Iowa encourages students to drive to school and have cheaper classes, whereas Red River College has a limited amount of space and, and charges uh, a premium for their parking passes. We found that both universities had similar structures in how many assignments are submitted within online drop boxes to reduce paper use. One main difference is that Red River College students have to pay 10 cents for every black and white sheet they print off, whereas UNI students are not charged for black and white printing. An instrumental part of both universities' initiatives is that they make students aware how much paper they use, as shown in the photo on the left side. How does your school work to reduce printing? sustainable programs within both the University of Northern Iowa and Red River College, we found that there were a few common traits. The biggest common trait we found was between both schools' recycling initiatives. Both schools have recycling initiatives with affirmative directions. Also, at Red River College, since we are a trade school, we have other recycling initiatives for specific programs that require it. We found that both universities had farmers markets and held initiatives for Earth Day. You and I highlights on sustainability through speakers and educational certificates. According to Eric O'Brien, this leads students to be more devoted and educated on topics related to sustainability. RRC does more with workshops and support weeks throughout the year to involve all of their students. How do you educate students about sustainability? <coughs> While doing our research, we found that both you and I and RRC have a fairly high level of involvement when it comes to their sustainability efforts. You and I has approximately 10,000 students, including full and part-time. They are first to get the Gold Star Award for Sustainability in the Midwest, number six overall. You and I is progressive for their size. They are the middle size of Iowa's campuses, so there's not enough students to have a huge focus on sustainability, and they aren't small enough that that is their only focus. So regarding this idea, they have a fairly high level of involvement. They also led the Tall Grass Prairie Center movement, which has affected the whole entire state of Iowa and their sustainability efforts and the ecosystem. RRC has approximately 30,000 students, including full and part-time, across multiple campuses. They won eight years in a row, 
for one of Canada's greatest employers, and they run, won four years in a row for Workplace Computer Challenge. They were a finalist last year at the Association for Advancement of Sustainability. They also won silver for the stars. RRC is a leader in sustainability with their finalist placement in the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. How does your school look ahead for the future? What's the next step? We need to find passionate and motivated people to lead projects to sustain programs like these. We need to build backing in all sizes of universities. And you need to check out to see if your school has any student initiatives. As future educators, we must bring a sense of drive to our students, educate the population to make informed decisions, and create advocates for their communities. Make sure to check out our resources page next, and thanks for starting this dialogue with us. Do you have any suggestions? So on the last page, we just have some resources that you can check out, and also at tinyurl.com slash um, sustainable universities, you can see this presentation and respond to it. And then I think Colton and Diana wanted to talk about a couple of things. Yeah, um, so we were asked to uh, look at, um, to assess our school, uh, Red River College, when it came to sustainability. So uh, after assessing our school, we found that uh, they have a very large uh, a department dedicated to sustainability. Uh, there are multiple people working in that department. Um, we found out that, as you saw on a different slide, that they have lots of awards. So clearly, having this department dedicated to sustainability is working. And they have a lot of other, a lot of events around campus uh, to promote sustainab sustainability. So we found that uh, the amount of time and effort they put into sustainability is really working for the college. So I think we want to touch upon what we learned. So be, on behalf of Colton and myself, uh, this collaboration has allowed us to work with others in another country. Uh, we were able to solve problems, complete a task, and create a product. Uh, it has allowed us to contribute to our school's improvement uh, as well as student success. Um, communication was huge for us. We did meet once a week uh, as well uh, uh, through Zoom as well as um, WhatsApp. We were talking probably every day going back and forth. Um, and lastly, it allowed us to, um, I guess, see how much sustainability our school has um, by talking to um, Whitney. I have to use the step stool. <laughs> I'm gonna be too tall. <laughs> All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Jewel. Hi, Jewel. Hi, guys. <laughs> okay, guys, we got one more to go. I don't know where Jewel's at. Jewel, where are you? <laughs> I mean... Oh, there, there you are! are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, so we'll let's go group of three. Go ahead. Would you like me to start? Yeah, yeah sure. Go. Introduce yourself. <laughs> All right. Well, as you guys know, I'm Jewel. <laughs> um, yeah, I, ooh, there's a nice picture. Um, I'm the, the techie um, from Winnipeg. I'm going to become an industrial arts teacher. Uh, I'm Lauren. I am the technical leader. I'm a, a secondary social science education major. Uh, I'm Molly. I'm a junior and I'm a communication sciences. So what we decided for our project is um, to tackle goal 12, which is responsible consumption and production. Um, we came to the conclusion that our Earth's natural resources are uh, being depleted faster than we can uh, produce them. So we decided to come up with a couple projects and lesson plans um, in ways in which students can uh, take their skills, do some of that sustainability, and um, continue to use it and work towards that in their communities. Yeah, something we really wanted to kind of emphasize was as teachers, 
what can we do to kind of, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like not used to this. Um, <laughs> We really wanted to make sure that this is something that we could bring to fellow teachers to kind of bring into the classroom and give a lot of different projects because we find students learn best with projects. So speaking of our projects, these are the three lesson plans that we have produced. Uh, Jewel, if you want to explain number one, and then we'll just go down the line real quick. Sure. So I took the first one because thinking about our goal 12, it's all consumption and production and doing it responsibly. So. I was thinking about kind of food waste and how we take all those resources and we kind of just squander them away. I know at, um, in our industrial arts program, we go to university and college. And so uh, there are composts, for example, bins at the University of Winnipeg. But I don't think I remember my high school, for example, having, um, having a compost bin. And that's something that's actually pretty easy to make. So that's kind of what I go through with this is that we actually uh, made a lesson plan on how to build, kind of talk about food waste, kind of bring it into talking about their lives, and then making a compost bin. Yeah. Um, I took the uh, second lesson plan. Ooh, we'll have to fix that. Um, since <laughs> I have a uh, history background, I decided to do a uh, project slash lesson that involves the history of clean water irrigation systems and water pathways. Um, so we did a whole unit pretty much on aqueducts, water systems. We get to build our own aqueduct and understand how those works. Um, but then we also get to take a closer look into their own personal lives and how they use water and more specifically how they waste water in their daily mm. life. Um, some of the things that they wouldn't be able to do if they didn't have clean water systems and looking into some resources of um, how they can help others get those clean water systems in their community. Um, and with mine, we're, and we're basically taking those two ideas and putting them together. Um, so they're going to be making a video to show to their community and to their school, basically describing everything that they have learned with making a composting bin and with the irrigation system so they can teach their friends and their community how to do it too. I'm going to jump back real quick to our academic rigor. This is a sixth grade lesson plan. We felt like that was a pretty good in between as Molly is an elementary uh, educator and me and Jewel are secondary educators. Um, our learning objectives coming from our UNESCO um, uh, website, um, being able to plan, implement, and evaluate consumption related activities using existing sustainability criteria. So being able to take what we've already had from that UNESCO website and uh, transferring it into what they're doing in their daily life. Um, the socio-emotional learning objective as the learner is able to engage in sustainable lifestyles based on information and projects they've obtained. So mm. just giving it to them in general and being able to go through that. Um, and then the learner demonstrating strategies of practices of, sustain of sustainability, production, and consumption. So being able to act out what we're giving to them. Um, this is the part where my video they're going to be able to take it home and like basically their video that they're creating is a DIY to how they can teach and do all these sustainability things at home and teaching people and they can choose organizations and offer profits to help them within within their community so that's pretty cool yeah. and just uh, educating others on the things that they've taken from our uh, lesson plans and seeing how they can stretch that out just not in their community but also throughout the world if I can add something yeah. I really enjoyed to thinking about them making a compost bin is because that's a direct way to impact the community is through your school, you make these bins and you get to take them home. You get to use them and it kind of really brings that element. It's not just a school project. Yeah. And Jewel, if you'd like to go over assessment real quick. Sure. So I kind of took control of this because we are in the assessment evaluation class. So I took our three lessons and I kind of went to town on them. So <laughs> <laughs> for the first one, it's pretty standard. It, you know, it goes over how you would evaluate the compost bin. It's your standard rubric for a project. Lesson two, that one, I went for a more formative approach. Um, it's really reflecting on the things they've learned. Um, like how, I think the first question is like, uh, how to incorporate into everyday life, three ways you can save water. It's getting them thinking. It's making sure they've understood the things which they've been working on this whole time. And then lesson three um, is similar to the kind of rubric idea where you would be judging then their, their ability to um, communicate their ideas through film. Um, ooh, 
that was a loud <laughs> um, ding dong. Uh, but also, again, leaving a lot of space for feedback because that's really important with these kinds of things is you build on it. And last but not least, just as a wrap up of uh, what our, uh, where we got some of our sources and how we can, or how everybody can use that um, taking it home and expanding a uh, portion of our project. We've just got some of our experts and sources that we've used throughout our project and some people we've gotten in, in contact with. Um, some of them are professors from our university. Some of them are just non-for-profits that we found on the web, but otherwise they're all here and ready to be used. Does anybody have any questions? Question. What was the most challenging part about this? Ooh. It seems cliche to see communication at this point, but probably communication. <laughs> yeah. um, we really enjoyed our Zoom sessions with uh, Jewel, but uh, sometimes it felt like maybe we couldn't get enough done within them. Um, yeah. But we, we all made it work and it was all right. <laughs> We took some cute pictures. Wait, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, like, look, we're so cute. <laughs> yeah, we're all yeah. good. Okay, all let's right. give a big hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> 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 well, that, sounds, it's, that was a pretty impressive presentation, don't you think? Absolutely, absolutely for everyone. So, um, in closing, uh, would you like to say a couple things, Dr. Brown, about what, it, what did you learn through this process? Oh my goodness, I can say more than a couple of things. First of all, I see that uh, Nadine from Red River College uh, has joined us, and she is the director of uh, teaching, learning, and uh, technology at the College uh, Innovation and Research. So welcome, Nadine, along with Judy. Now, the learning that has happened here is tremendous. And it's learning that we haven't even seen yet. When these projects go into the students' classes, into their lesson plans, that's when the real learning is going to happen. So it just started. I just want to say, however, that global collaboration is an essential part of education and teacher education. And that is, if these students had not experienced global collaboration in any way, shape, or form, research shows, and I'll say chances are, they will never do this. So the experience has to be there, and they have now experienced that. Was it perfect? Did we finish everything on every page on every website? No. The project was short in scope. It was approximately four weeks. So anyone watching this and participating in presentation today, wow, that was done in four weeks with little class time, I may add. So students have gone way over and above, connected, collaborated. They have implemented global collaboration to extents that they were not taught in specific formats, but figured it out. So the motto for teachers is, we can figure it out. Now, I also want to say that Flat Classrooms uh, is um, or, or was an organization that provided teachers with uh, learning to be a, a global collaborative teachers. Uh, I am a graduate of that program. Lee and I have collaborated on a number of projects over the years. And as he said at the beginning, Lee said he kept threatening me. We were going to do a global project, and this time we just actually decided to do it. So it's been an awesome experience, and uh, I look forward to continued projects. And I would like to, at this time, present a trophy to all the students in the project. So congratulations. Yes. yes. All students. All right. I turn it over to you, Dr. Zeiss. Hey, I want to thank all of you and the work that you put into this uh, um, from you know across across the, the national boundaries. This has been quite an experience. Uh, one of the things that I found most important was the authenticity of the process. It wasn't something where we had it all canned and we said, okay, you're gonna go step by step. There was a lot of frustration along the way, but you worked it out. And as I think an important point that you made, Dr. Brown, is the fact that now that they've had the experience of this, they're actually gonna go out and do that. When I was hearing things such as the, the biking project, 
actually going out into classrooms. That's, well, that's what makes this all worthwhile. As a teacher, as a professor who's trying to uh, help develop the educators of our future um, population, seeing these sorts of things, this is how we make a change in education. Certainly, scheduling was a challenge. Certainly, a lot of these things were challenges, but you were using tools, you were using WhatsApp, you were using whatever it took to make those sorts of things happen. Most importantly, I found this to be an incredibly great um, interaction with uh, Dr. Brown and, and your team. I hope that we can do this again. What do you think, Dr. Brown? What's next? She's saying yes. Her lips are saying yes, okay. <laughs> Well, celebration, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, Judy McGurk here. Nice work, everyone.